and and then you're like, it's so hot, I'm gonna die. You know, yeah. You could fry an egg on my bald head. <laughs> oh, I'd pay to see that. <laughs> we we also had such a bad winter. Well, bad if you're like really into snow and yeah. winter sports, yeah. yeah, and scary if you're into climate change. So. <laughs> Do you want to come over for <laughs> afternoon, afternoon tea, tea beers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put oh on gosh. some Def Leppard and some <laughs> John Bon Jovi. <laughs> uh, I reckon there should be an old person tax, is what I was thinking. So <laughs> they should, because my, my comment was they should price them out. Why don't we just price annoying people out? We, we should do a sweepstake on who, who caves first. Oh, God. <laughs> Twice podcast it's up sweepstake. To you guys. It's up to you guys. It's fine. Yeah, you can do what you want, yeah. Hey, we're going to do something slightly different in that we're going to taste the first beer as part of the warm-up. Yeah. Now, the question is, which of the two do you prefer? Garage oh Project, Party and Bullshit? That is f- cool. Good, eh? Sorry. We, Why are you apologising? It start, is f- cool. We've started off with bleeps already. <laughs> <laughs> not even in the warm-up yet. Uh, how would you summarise the... Uh, I think we're going to have to start well, I think I one. just did. Yeah. It's f- cool. Effing, flipping, <laughs> beeping, cool. Excellent. Um, it's got... A font that looks like someone's intestines. <laughs> uh, um, Bubbling. It's a, it's called Party and Bullshit. It's got a wicked illustration. Um, cool colours. Yeah, man. Garage Project, man. They really know how to do the, the, the design. Ten minute walk. Yeah. Ten minute walk. Oh, ten minute walk. Yes. Whatever. Whatever. Six point, was it 6.2? Yeah. Are you going to deign to have a bit of a snifter? Oh, I've done a it, sniff it test. It says on the size, it says one pant. So you, um, how long have you not been drinking for? Mm, I've actually lost count. I wonder if I could work that out. It must be a couple of months. Wow. I thought it would be like two weeks. Whoa. It hey. must be. It must be close to it. Yeah. That's, uh, you must that's have miserable. saved loads of money, though. Mm, yes, but I've drunk a lot of sugary drinks. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, well, you go out and you know, what, what, are, what does the bar have? Oh, a ginger beer. Just a sugary uh, Schweppes, Schweppes ginger yeah. beer. So you have a lot more sugar. So I think I've put on weight. Oh, no. Is, that's oh. all right. Uh, is, that, is that a Charlotte preference? A bit more beefy? Uh, uh, she says, I don't know. <laughs> I think she's being polite. <laughs> it's cute <laughs> until it's not. Oh, you're so cuddly. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just softer now. Yeah. We're yeah, going to have another pick warmer. on Rob, Rob episode, yeah? That's right. <laughs> oh, uh, no, let's not do no. that. All right. Um, initial impressions of uh, brew that may or may not be true, number one. Yeah, so I, I like bad. the smell. It's got kind of a funky. It's, well, yeah, there's sediment in there. It's quite funky in terms of, you know, it looks murky mm. but it's got a really nice smell in- intentionally cloudy there's a yeah it's pretty cloudy there's a little thing on the side saying um mm. Mm, that's quite nice warning may contain cloudiness um may cloud the mind explicit haze warning if cloudy beer offends you please drink from the can or close your eyes <laughs> oh interesting <laughs> i'm like i like these people even more I'm trying to think what the correlation is with party and bullshit. Well, I mean, the can is very busy in the graphics. So you see things that you affiliate when you're tripping balls. Like, you know, unicorns and skulls and stuff, I assume. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> um, maybe it's more like a party beer, if if you're into that. The pant KR reference is a Norwegian currency. There is some other language on this. Hmm. So and maybe that's one that they normally imported, sell. Imported into Norway. Ah. And that is how many KR pants you will receive for recycling the can. Oh, cool. It says imported into Norway by. Maybe. That's the exciting bit. They're exporting to Norway. That's awesome. Sweden and Australia. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Um, so my initial impression of uh, brew number one, um, love the smell. Really, mm. just mm. Nice yeah, smells. excellent smell. Super, yep. super, super aromatic. Thank you. For aromatic the mango, a mm. little bit of bitters, yeah, and the mm. taste pretty complex. Quite a lot going on. Just like yep. the label, and it's quite, mm. it's quite bitter, but um, quite a refreshing, nice bitter. Not, it doesn't linger too long. It doesn't overstay its welcome. <laughs> what, what do you, <laughs> what do you reckon, Katerina? Like a good hangover. <laughs> uh, yeah, like the one I. 
I'm currently experiencing. <laughs> oh no! Uh, it's a it's a two dayer. This one. Ooh. Dang. Yeah, Halloween parties. I tell you. Jaya that. gets down. Um, but my impressions, yeah, it's like a bouquet. It's very um, mm. yes. spring. Mm. It certainly smells spring. like a bouquet. Mm. Mm. Spring. S- summer fruits. Yeah. Yes, mm. I could say that. Well done, Garth. Yes, yeah. Garth. You've, um, you've, you've his, done it again. His requirement was uh, initially bikes, but he actually <laughs> took a pass on that. The closest he could get was the uh, vigilante biker bike. Wow. As opposed to the... Um, Interesting. That's, that's being number two. Then he said, oh, just try this. You'll like this. So we went with a two-wheeler, two-wheeling it into spring. Possibly. Is, is the theme. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Nicely pulled back on track. Yes. Mr. Co-host. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 going to give this quite a solid score. I think I'm going to give it a four point five. <laughs> oh, what, oh, what the what? Yeah, yeah. No, oh, no. It's I mean, hey. you know, four point two five of that is the design. But um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, kidding aside, it's a it's a fantastic <laughs> can, and it's a yeah, it's really really um, feels sophisticated. Oh, sophisticated very, beer. Yes. Very good. Yes. Very good. Yeah. What yeah. about yourself, David? I I'm going to struggle to give this less than 4.5. I'm going to go 4.6. Oh wow! I'm oh. very very happy with this brew. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Um, it's easy to get sick of IPAs and just the hoppiness through the back of your skull. And this is an IPA, but it's they've done something interesting there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like us talking about the mango and the label and garage project and 10 minutes walk. Yeah, um, Katarina. I would. I want to take it to the beach or something, you know, right? So mm. I'll go 4.3. Ah. Did I smell some hints of lychee? Perhaps. Lychee. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> right. Yes. So you stop you, drinking you, alcohol. Your, your, your and palate your has <laughs> degraded. <laughs> <laughs> it, do, it does have a, a unicorn uh, puking rainbow on a walrus? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's some spectacular illustration on this. It's really good. Excellent. I'm going for a second. So and like pastel coloring. Yes. Like the pink yeah. and the blues and the greens. Yeah. Uh, Rob, in terms of the sniff test, would you uh, give it a rating out of five, even just for smell? Hmm. Yes, I'd give it a one out of five for smell because I just want to drink it. <laughs> oh. <Aww>. This sucks. <laughs> Is there <laughs> is there a, an event horizon in the future where you could return to... This is the world's worst bet. This is actually the world's worst bet. So okay. whoever caves first yeah. loses, so the other person gets the money, and then we decided <sighs> to, to make it uh, not... Well, it's it's inflate, inflationary, so the longer we're not drinking, the more the bet is worth. That's the incentive to keep in it. You rather than just, Yeah, it was like sounded like really now? clever. <laughs> But it's uh, not very clever. Hmm. Was this uh, was this your significant better half? I know this with uh, with old mate Erin, so well, uh, ah. a former guest on the show, who's also not. Yes, yeah, so she's we're not, both not drinking. So it's, it's that yeah. wow. they, they bet each other. What's yeah. the when, wager when, when up to now? When though? we've been drinking, well, they they started at a hundred, so yeah. it must yeah. be quite must a lot be, now. I'd have to look at the number of weeks. It must be you know, one hundred and fifty or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, cup, and cup days coming oh no yeah. and summer and Christmas parties and all the good things basically mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah yeah this was pretty dumb wow could you not have chosen something less painful to give up like I think if like I was what? sober I wouldn't have chosen this bit that's the problem ah uh, make the bits when you've when you're drinking yeah. So <laughs> yeah it's not lost on me <laughs> mm. what's the worst bet that you've ever made David Ooh. Have you done something similarly stupid that you wished you didn't? It's, it, that one is pretty up there. Let yeah. me think about it for a second. Um, Same, yeah, I don't know one. Uh, not a huge betting person, but yeah. um, I, I, I bet somebody recently that I was going to get that job that I didn't get. Oh, no. But that was just like, that was $100. Right, oh. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's not like an escalator program. <laughs> I, one of my friends bet his mate that he could be vegetarian for a year. A year, okay. And so I think like 16 years later, he's still vegetarian. Wow. Yeah. Do you mm. like keep earning? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Like when that's does like it? You should, you should have done the interest <laughs> thing. Mm, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about you, mate? Any bets that you've... I, uh, I, no, I don't gamble like that. Um, no. No. No, I'm... Uh, yes, Phil and his money are 
student part or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> with with gambling, no gambling is a. I try and stay away from it. Yeah. So, w- winner of the current bets, Rob, Country Mile. Hmm. Yeah. Really lucky to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> mate. Celebrate yeah. by sniffing a beer. <laughs> uh. Hey, this is episode 32. I am with my regular and generous and kind and thoughtful co-host, Mr. Jai Gibson. How oh, are you, you, sir? Were, I thought you were going to say Katarina. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, God, he's not talking about me. <laughs> Thank you. That's, uh, yeah, you're far too generous. I know, it's right. I've, I've had a bit of time out of work for a couple of days. So I'm obviously like recharging some batteries somewhere. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. How are you keeping? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Great. Yes. Great, great stuff. Um, but we've also uh, joined uh, this evening by our two originals, as we're going to call them. Uh, on my left, the Katerina Gutierrez. How are you doing? Hello. It's really fun to be on with Rob because it's like this balancing act, right? Where he gets to go, oh, it's so fun to be me. And I'm like, yay, a ball of energy. Like... <laughs> Because I feel like usually I'm the negative Nancy in the group, and so no, I get to pass it off to Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Proudly wears the moniker of the most cynical person in Christchurch. Um, you know, the king of low expectations. <laughs> Good old Husky Henderson. Rob, Excellent. Rob. Um, oh yeah, that was the nickname. Poly, entrepreneurial polymath, um, known for not having a single job. But a, a, a thousand different things that he does to his poorly I paid know. jobs. A thousand different poorly paid jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Some of which are actually quite awesome, though. A thousand times zero is still zero. <laughs> oh, there you go. Cynical. So, it's so yeah. cynical. Ouch. When was the? What was the date of the first one? The the date of the very first pilot would have been August. Uh, Mid August. But I haven't published the first two. Was it the eighteenth of August? Because they were too awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so just really so special. Awesome. Let's just mm. say. sound wise. <laughs> uh, you know, still working on the audio thing, but I think we're we're finding a level where they can actually be listenable. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's pretty good. We're really pleased to have the originals back around the table. Um, shortly before I shoot off to Wellington and learn how to do remote podcasting with Christchurch people, amongst other things. Um, Katerina, you've barely been in the country the last <laughs> couple of months. Um, give us a quick whistle-stop tour of countries. All right. I went to Sydney, Australia, for the international listeners, um, to see the Frida Kahlo exhibit. And then I jetted back home to Christchurch. I went to the Bike Bike Conference in Detroit, Michigan, in the United States, um, New York and Atlanta, and then home again to Christchurch. So that was really fun. Yeah, so that was all up two and a half weeks away. Fantastic. Oh, Oh, no. And you met your fundraising goal. I did. uh, Crowdfunding goal. Oh, you did. That's good. I did. Excellent. Uber, thanks to you two for contributing. Give a little's uh, campaign. I raised two Awkward. grand to. <laughs> 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 Rob, I know you've your inve- your time and your investment in me is is a little different. So don't worry about it. I, it doesn't go unnoticed. It's not cash <laughs> donations all the time that matter. Um, Two thousand dollars to get over there. So it's yeah. it was a bit of a whirlwind trip and like last minute decision on my part to go and speak at this conference. But I raised the money and that was really fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what I really liked was the fundraising updates on route, and like you weren't quite there, oh. and it was kind of like, please can I, please can you help me out? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I would like to get I'm back. Still going. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was, was oh it's such a long way to travel really um for such a short amount of time and it was really good to see family and friends but the the crux of it was to be around my people what i'm coining them it's like these bike people these bike awesome people doing really cool stuff internationally so i saw a lot of i learned a lot in that process for sure superb mm. and bikes are a bit of a common theme between our two guests today because uh, rob has been developing further the uh, the bike share pilot in Christchurch how's that been going Rob 
been really good. That's been excellent. Uh, so the bike share pilot. So what's happening there? So we've had a year. So we've been running a year. Well, so in August, we've been running a year. Brilliant. Uh, we had 6,000 rides or just over 6,000 rides. And uh, the neat stuff is mostly by locals and uh, mostly for free trips uh, backwards and forwards across the CBD. So that is very cool. Um, it ends in a year as it stands. So uh, there's quite a lot of work to do there. Uh, and we're doing cool stuff like we're testing integration with the metro card so you you know hypothetically go up, hop off the bus and tap your metro card on the bike and it unlocks the bike and all sorts of cool stuff like that so uh, we're doing that and working with the University of Canterbury on research uh, around ridership and, and what a citywide system could look like so we're doing a lot of work we're going to come up with a really cool plan for the city yeah. uh, but we're going to need lots more support to, to make that a reality so yeah. yeah. Would you, would you say there is broadly increasing levels of support or is it becoming ambivalence or is it, well, there's, where there's, are things yeah, at with it? There's, there's broadly increasing levels of support, that is a good phrase, um, <laughs> for every, uh, you know, I'd say we've won over four out of five of the, uh, you know, important people that we need to win over. Yeah. Uh, the trouble is the sort of one out of five still uh, a bit sceptical and uh, they're, the, they're, you know, the last people, they're the hardest to, hardest to crack, so... Um, working on those, you know, and uh, yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. yeah. Con- concrete shoes, incoming tide. What was this, right? Concrete shoes, incoming tide. Oh, yeah, that's how it feels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I know more good way to deal with the last one of the five, but right. I wouldn't want to condone violence you, you, in any you, form. You did a bit of um, <laughs> kind of, I don't know, I don't know what, politicking, you know, you did a bit of um, campaigning at Petra the other week, yes. there, which yeah. was that which was, was so good. It was really good. It went down really well. Well, that's a surprise. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. no, it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, I think the key is that over the next year, and uh, it might not be obvious now how you know how, how people can get involved, but we are going to be talking to more people about how they can actually help us, you know, help show their support for bikes here and say that they want a part of the city. In the same way, we did the crowdfunding campaign, and that was really great. Um, we're going to even even more of that to win over those last few people. Um, so and and more people getting out using it, even if it's just a short trip, even if it's just even if it's just rent it and then you go for a walk and come back and put it back. Um, it's all another ride and it all, it all helps in terms of stats. So yeah, mm-hmm. oh, great, cool. How's your biking career been going, Mr. Gibson? Lamely, lamely. Oh. I've put on layby a bike bag, a pannier. Oh, right. So it's very expensive, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I've kind of like so that's me i'm gonna get a bike because uh you know buy this pannier and i'm gonna be like damn it i got this pannier i need to buy a bike wow i've never heard of that tactic before i'm well, gonna start selling people panniers and then maybe they'll buy a bike after i find that it's worked for me and with other things that because I, i'm 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 so frugal and mean with myself that something as kind of luxurious as having a, a bike Hmm. You know, like, because I'm not going to just get a piece of dunga. I'm going to get a nice bike because uh, we had Brompton. We had titanium forked Bromptons <sighs> in London. Show off. Yeah. Oh. So, we, we, you know, we want, we want quality. So um, that's like a good $3,000 yeah, $3, worth of bike. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit, yeah. Bromptons, but it, but so. they're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. And you can take them everywhere. And you fold them up and put them on the bus. And <laughs> It's always sunny in Brighton. Yeah, right. <laughs> When I swear I, to God. I, whenever I've gone, I've, I feel like I've lost a layer of skin from the sandblasting I get. Oh, basically. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, just um, tell us a bit more about your presentations in Detroit. And, sure. Uh, how they went. And At the Bike Bike Conference. Yeah. So I spoke, uh, I facilitated two workshops, although they turned in a bit more into talks. Well, one was a workshop, one was a talk. The first one was about sustainable practices and transition in a post-disaster city. Um, So I went to share some learnings from my work at Rad Bikes post-earthquake and the context of what that looks like compared to Detroit, another post-disaster city, but not a natural disaster. Uh, So for those who don't know, Detroit suffered from the crash of the automobile industry and a municipal bankruptcy, um, which that disaster has lasted well over 20 years for them. Um, so I went to share some of our practices and what we do as a bike collective here in Christchurch. And then I, it was not a workshop that I chose to facilitate. Well, I did choose, I did not propose this topic, but it definitely is a topic that needs to be talked about, which is, um, 
Disengaging from the White Savior Complex is the title, which meant um, more about gender equality in the bike industry, which yeah. is a tough, tough sector to, to break into if you're not of that kind, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. So um, that went really well. That was both were really well attended. Both had um, just a really interesting group of people around it. So people who attend Bike Bike are mostly nonprofits, co-ops and collectives from all around the world, primarily North America, but um, Mexico, any city in the U.S. that has a collective, they were there and a lot of Canadians, which was really cool. So it was a lot of perspectives on it and um, a lot of women actually. So that was, that was good. Yeah. And it went really well. I think people just don't know our story and I really wanted to go and share that. So rad bikes does some amazing things as far as their humble beginnings and the growth that they've seen in just three years. So for example, we've moved four times in the last three years by definition, we have to be in transitional we have to be flexible and some of these bike collectives have been there 15 20 years in their one warehouse and built you know thousands and thousands of bikes up in this place but yeah. have never had to move um and so if you if you think about it there's a lot to learn from that perspective yeah and um, well, what was it that made you decide to go with the I, I keep forgetting to ask you but um all the Christchurch bike share bikes are beautiful bikes beautifully maintained what, what, what made what made you go the uh, the professional route uh, so there's a couple of reasons so one it's not necessarily about the uh, the type of bike or what the bike looks like but about the whole system that runs it and that sort of thing so uh, we went with the next bike system uh, to be to be honest mostly because there was someone in New Zealand already using it up in Auckland uh, and so uh, we, we could tap into that resource uh, and it you know it also comes with the app and all the sort of you know hardware and they've been around for years and years and years yeah like you mentioned that and it's sort of called the first generation bike share systems where it's just sort of a painted bike and that sort of thing they do all go missing and end up in people's <laughs> garages and i think Christchurch did it in the 60s right. older people have told me that that was a thing um those same people then told me that these bikes would all end up in the in the haven <laughs> um but it's okay because the Gormley statue will catch them on the way past. Um, <laughs> That'd be a uh, great art yeah. piece. <laughs> there's Fantastic. A, there's, a big, there's a big difference. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was kind of important, but it was, yeah, it was also the flexibility side of things, which is, which is really good. Yeah. So I visited Atlanta. And they have just expanded their bike share program. So they have these really pretty blue bikes there, um, which I think are called relay bikes or something like that. I didn't get a ride on them. but um, And then I've lived in a city like Portland that just launched their bike share program, right? So two polar opposites as far as cities with cycle friendliness. Um, and I'm curious to, to hear from Rob where he thinks at the end of the pilot where Christchurch will land as far as cycle friendliness is on that index and what bike share has to do with that change, if any change. All right. It's good. Uh, so the, uh, if we look at cycle friendliness in a year's time in Christchurch, uh, the, if we, you know, I'll start that again. If we look at uh, you know cycle friendliness, friendliness in Christchurch in a year's time, so I think overall it's it's all it's all on the up. Uh, and if you look at cities that uh, have installed bike share systems, uh, you know often it's uh, it's part of that puzzle in terms of making cycling more visible and and also lowering the barriers of entry to getting more people cycling. So, and and you notice a lot of those cities don't wait until. Uh, you know, they're at maximum cycling enthusiasm and, you know, hundreds of kilometres of cycleways, they do it all together uh, to grow the whole to grow the whole culture and the whole, the whole you know, feel of the city. So I think the, the interesting thing is that there's a whole lot of cities around the world that are quite similar to Christchurch. There's some cities, particularly in Midwest America, uh, which have a similar population, uh, but they also have a similar uh, sort of car culture or, or car usage rate. Um, so, you know, because bike share is so prevalent around the world there are, there are you know hundreds and thousands of cities with bike share systems there's actually quite a few good uh Christchurch comparisons you know places like London aren't a particularly good comparison and everyone goes you know well we're not Paris we're not London but there are a lot of cities particularly in the states um there's a lot of cities in the states of all different shapes and sizes uh who are who are putting bike share systems in so I think the, the issue for Christchurch is going to be what does that system look like in terms of 
you know, population density and station location and those sort of things. Because um, Christchurch is, you know, in a year's time, two years' time, it's still pretty unique in that regard. Um, and how do we, you know, put something in place that, that can adapt to that, uh, but is also sort of in proportion to what's there at that time. Yeah. Um, the um, the new cycleway, like going up and down St Asif, is like, is so good that I almost just want to cycle up and down it end to end <laughs> just because it's there. Do you know what I mean? It's like, in terms of infrastructure and what, Christchurch however challenging the politics have been to make it happen it has the beginnings of that tipping point I don't know how close we are to that tipping point what do you reckon Jaya for changing infrastructure from motorized to human I'd say we're nowhere near a tipping point no no I'm perhaps being optimistic Uh, uh, yeah I'm (laughs) I'm very uh, you know I'm very pessimistic um just because there's just too much corporate interest there's too much money to be made to to have that happen right now um although there are very cool things that you know very cool people are doing like like elon musk and tesla and he's really trying to create a market to make it happen so i hate the conversation of us versus them you know like i consider myself a cyclist but i'm an also i also drive i also walk i take the bus so i multimodal I think is the label that I've been given as well um I also wanted to walk you walk as well I walk around like I walked here and I walked all day today because I also drove so there you just have to do these things um Rob took an awesome photo the other day of the little pamphlet that um, city council started putting in the windshield of those cars that were in the lane. So the lane's not technically open, um, but they've been given warnings and city council is taking it seriously, which is great to a degree um, and saying, you know, this is a warning. We've got your registration number and all sorts of language that I agree and disagree with, but it's on there and they're taking steps in the right direction. That's Also, one of eight major cycleways that are going into Christchurch. So that's huge infrastructure that we're we're leading the country in, which I feel like is is really great. It's also we've had to do it because we've had such a disaster that put us in this situation. Really, it wasn't I don't know that like if we didn't have an earthquake or if we weren't rebuilding or something that we would be considering eight new cycleways in the city. I don't Uh, know that. that, that. That's kind of my point. You know, it's that we're not at. We're not at a tipping point because, yeah, we, we, we're we getting this through disaster money, not through, you know, the desire to innovate and change. But wasn't it that council was forced to act in terms of cycle infrastructure through the sharing idea because of such overwhelming, it was one of the biggest requests by the population to have a more cycle and human friendly city. So it's kind of like to be seen to be ignoring the will of the people would be be oh, I don't that know. didn't stop them otherwise <laughs> they, they've kind of ignored a lot Fair. of that that whole share an idea thing so the funding for the infrastructure also isn't necessarily coming from rebuild um money either it's uh a lot of mixed funding from nzta and the likes um so it, it's all a little confused it gets really political basically so i would love to see that broken down it's it's a matter of going oh god that's a huge system and i don't understand it and i don't know what's going on and i wish i did but at the same time i'm just trying to get shit done so the next thing i want to do is when that cycle line opens and i've shared this with rob is have a big bike lane celebration like just open the lane yeah, up yeah. and let's see what it looks like and yeah, let's celebrate some, the business party and bullshit yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a garage project sponsored bike lane celebration <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> or something um, just so that there's more visibility there which is similar to what Rob was saying earlier about the bike share program that's the big thing here is just getting visibility mm-hmm. so if we're out on the street celebrating with fireworks <laughs> then <laughs> what would that look like what and would what would they think it's uh it's interesting though that um, so before the earthquakes Crusher City Council for a few years actually had a moratorium on making new cycle lanes because no one could agree on what a cycle lane should be so for quite a few years the cycling people said no more cycle lane and when i say cycling people the people at the council who were in charge of cycling there was actually a pause on new cycle lanes so the very fact that we're now you know and, and i think it was about 2013 when this whole concept was proposed in terms of these major cycle routes and the i think the original thing was you know here's a couple of ones we could focus on and the councillors at the time said well what would happen if we just did them all which was kind of like a surprise given the, the previous climate was you know, no new cycleways. Sure. Um, 
And I think originally when they came in, they were it was there was a rates increase to cover them. But then as time's gone on, the, the government's come to the party with the new cycleways fund, and that's and the whole thing's obviously costing more. But it it all started off with it. Well, what if we did all nine or eight or whatever it is? So uh-huh. yeah. So in in some ways, council is to be congratulated for being bold where councils are not historically known for being bold mm. i think it's easy in a meeting to vote on something and say yes and not you know and it, so it was the previous 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 council now i was gonna say previous council yeah. um yeah it's, it was quite flippant and out of the blue and i think that's why it kind of uh, got through the radar you know, <laughs> of the, of, you know. it was an um, accident yeah yeah sort of yeah <laughs> sort of yeah yeah i mean I, I think to your comment david i would agree yes the council could be congratulated for that. I would also like to think that my council would step up to the plate and just go one more beyond that. As a city who's had such a rich history in cycling, who's been the bedrock of cycling in New Zealand, why aren't we setting an example for the rest of the world even to to do something different, right? Like we're, we're just behind. And what if there was a, a whole highway dedicated to it? You know, what if we closed out the whole city to, to vehicular traffic? Like those weren't even ideas on the table is my understanding. And I get it. We had focus in different areas and we have to rebuild and all this stuff, but it just feels like uh, maybe I don't want to be too congratulatory to it basically. Fair, fair. Um, so there's a there's a council sports facility I've spent a lot of time at in the last 10 years and um, there's like a few acres given over to car parking maybe for you know three or four hundred vehicles and there's 12 bike racks and I'm like what if there were three or four hundred bike racks right. and that just went in people go wow we can cycle but it's like, oh, no, well, there's, there's not really the demand. And it's like, well, uh, hang on a second. Um, you're giving over all this space and wasted land of these empty vehicles with one person in them Yeah. against the density of bicycles that you could put in a sports centre. It's just, yeah. There's not even a choice at that point, right? They're already telling you what to do. Uh-huh. So it's just a wrong way of thinking. I would, I would, I think it's just the wrong way of thinking. Yeah. So, mm. um, I, I like your. I don't know what to do about that, though. I like your position on you know multimodal and multimodal and you know not having this us and them. I I, t- I totally agree. I'm 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 in that camp. Um, I just I feel like there's lots of missed opportunity here. I think one of my one of my pet issues with the cycleways in Christchurch, and it's not to say that they're not great, but what is clearly happening is they're being engineer led. And if you look at what's happening down at just outside here, it's clearly led by transport engineers, and they. I would like to think that there was more, you know, collaboration between you know them and urban designers and 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 Christchurch in particular. I don't know why it's a Christchurch thing. It seems to be very engineer led. If you look at some of the proposals that just come out for K Road, it's clearly there's a design focus of that, and and my understanding is there's a landscape architect designer involved in in the consultation that sort of stuff. And I just it's it's not that they're not good. It's not, that, but they could be great. And they and the thing is, when they're great and when they're well designed with a user focus, everyone loves them that much more, and it's that much easier to do more. And I can't help but feel, and it is just a feeling, um, that it's very engineer led. But um, there's um, there was the forest of traffic lights out just mm, near the innovation mm. centre, and it's kind of like, why does uh, maybe two junctions need 18 sets of traffic lights? I, I like Johnny Moore's comment that you, you get a certain amount, you get a free trip to Bali, and that's clearly <laughs> what's happening here. Is there's an, you know, an incentive for the <laughs> specifier to do you know 50 a month, and you get a trip to Bali. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's clearly that level of... And then you get the sound, kind of controversy and stuff, and I don't know. I, I just look at what some other cities are doing and how they're doing it. Uh, give and, it, and give us an jealous. example, Rob, because I was... I was Remarking, I just remarked about how nice the street looked now that the mm. bike lane was in there. Yeah. Because the paving they're using is quite nice, you know, but to separate, mm. you know, the, the bike lane from, from the pedestrian. And I remember how ugly that road was, that street was before mm. it, and now it looks really nice. But I'm interested to know what kind of design features you're talking about. It'd be interesting yeah, well, I mean, to... The, the, the image I've got in mind, and it's, it's a podcast, so it's not super good, but uh, some of the stuff in K Road, for example, there's a section where to you know separate the bikes from the cars, there's a whole lot of coloured 
box geometric kind of shapes all the way down this part of K Road. Obviously K Road's a kind of a festive kind of place and there's all sorts of lights and that sort of thing, uh, but uh, they're, they're removable as well. So for street events and things, they can move them aside and, cool. and you've got a big space. It just, it's just little touches. It's not, yeah, it's not saying that this is badly done, um, but it's, and it's pretty, this is pretty monochromatic. You know, the whole oh, yes. city is the yeah. same kind of thing. And there's just, you know, is it, you know, if you involve some urban designers and that sort of stuff, there's a little bit more scope to, to do things a bit more differently and a bit more exciting. That that's actually extends beyond the cycleways in terms of my fear that we're getting a really monochromatic, you know, street setting um, in the city. You know, it's every, you know, three trees, three car parks, one tree, three car parks, one tree, the same street furniture around the whole city, everything, which looks nice on the plans and it looks consistent and that sort of stuff. But is it going to end up being really nice, but, well, just nice, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah totally feel you i think it's the subtle differences that that mean something so if we think of the pink pathway up in oakland it's gotten all these rave reviews and i can't stand it right it connects nothing to another nothing side of oakland and it's just this amazing thing to a lot of people because it's pink and it's gotten just all this attention it's got cool lights fun to walk up and down and even ride on but um its purpose is lacking and if we think of um some cycle lanes like in new york where i was just um at where i just visited right up and down prospect park in brooklyn there are lots of planters and lots of greenery in and around the cycle way. Obviously, it's on the corner edge or edge side of a of a major um, park. But New York is a very not monochromatic, but it is a very, you know, concrete jungle oh, yeah. and you need that greenery. And so what happens when we eliminate all the trees and all the all the greenery and all the botanics? Um, we're just going to lose some some love in the garden city and mm -hmm. people are bitching about how a tree on a cycle lane is going to eliminate their car park. And it drives me crazy <laughs> oh, to think that that's actually the argument that's happening right now, as opposed to that's such I'll a find lame, another $4 a, a day car park, which is cheap as chips in this yeah. country to, I should maybe think about riding my bike to work instead. Mm -hmm. Or even parking just outside of the four avenues and going the last kilometre by bike. That's enough. Yeah, why it's not try like, that? Yeah, there's enough bike carriers on the back of bikes that it's a distinct possibility. So uh, That's yeah. why I'm running for bike mayor. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think another a great um, project that I really admire in New York is the High Line. Okay, um, yeah. Which, they, which they've made a, you know, sort of a green artery. Um, they, it's basically an old um, railway line. And they've kind of made it into a kind of like a, an elevated park. It's beautiful. And walkway. And it's just fantastic. And it, and there's nothing kind of too crazily conceptual. It's just a nice use of variety of plants and, and street furniture. And yeah, probably, you know, now, now that you've said that, Rob, my mind is kind of like scanning all the new street furniture well, throughout it, Christchurch. It, it, and I'm actually going to be a bit more critical about it. It's mm. actually got a name. It's And I can't remember. It's sort of like the Christchurch Street Furniture Toolbox or something. So they've selected. There's about you know, oh God. two variations oh of seats. There's one kind of rubbish bin. There, there is within each kind of thing. There's about three or four options, but that's it for the city. So that's the overarching street furniture selection for it's all the rebuild um, projects. Lego and, for council. And, yeah, and it's some city, it's some <laughs> some city urban design. It's like you know, right? Every three car, but there is a, and a they've got a word for it, but that's what is going into everything. There was a project ages ago that Ministry of Awesome facilitated to design new bike parking, before there was the cut and paste little toolbox that council had, <laughs> um, and we engaged the community to decide on what kind of parking that they thought would be beautiful, both um, from a cultural perspective and an artscape, but also functional as a bike park. It's the Coral Reliefs um, near Restart Mall, uh -huh. across from Ballantine, yeah. Ballantines. And um, that's very unique parking, and we actually drove, rode by it on the Scape Public Art um, cycle tour that we did a few weekends ago. And I was like, right, that's there, and it serves such a purpose, and it's also beautiful. It's, I mean, it was a pain in the ass to run that contest and project as an organization but it was to me a kind of a light bulb moment of like well how do we engage the community to decide what they want to see yeah. and give opportunity to an artist to showcase their work mm. i was a judge on that competition and uh, there were some amazing finalists that didn't make it and i often think how hilarious with it i mean there were some that were like 
one or two stories high so you'd see them miles away and they were bright colors uh, and the idea was oh there's the bike parking it's miles away but the council's urban design guys were like mm, it could be dated pretty quickly so um they were open to it but yeah we, we sort of strayed away from that yeah I, I i find that as an argument really kind of annoying because in these days we have technology to make things flexible and mm. and and to build sort of you know modular units that can be that can be sort of changed every couple of years if necessary to to reflect you know societal changes mm. yeah. but it's like it's it's i mean the obvious one to me is that you um get a job lot of um sort of anodized poles paint them like the traffic light poles and add hundreds to the 18 that are on that street <laughs> to make a real <laughs> statement about how many are there we thought we should put more and like literally you wake up the next morning and there's like a like a forest of traffic poles and that will make the point quite elegantly. well and it's funny because there's already that forest that tree scape yeah. piece that's there that will trees or palms made out of wood mm -hmm. and i love that piece and i was like now i feel like i'm just so distracted by all these yeah. po light poles that i can't even see the beautiful art mm. so maybe um frame them in wood oh yeah <laughs> give them like gilded <laughs> frames each and every one of them but there is there is a council fund that um that was for transforming those um, junction boxes the electric yeah you know the, you know the phone and electric junction boxes and if you go around some parts of the city there's some really beautiful painted ones but you know, there's no reason why you can't apply that to, to other stuff you know it's true yeah go further mm. um talking about further who would like a further refreshment oh okay <laughs> god <laughs> the segues, they just get worse and worse. Oh, really? But, but was that oh. about the right sort of timing for you? Yeah, no, that was good. That yes, was good, so good, was good, good yeah. timing, bad segue. All right, this is number two, Horsebox Brewing Vigilante New Zealand IPA. Um, we've Another got, IPA, um, right? If I just point it out, you, Katerina, and if you hold the um, bottle, uh, just give us a quick description of the uh, of the label there. What's going on? We've got a shiny blue and silver label with black lettering saying Vigilante New Zealand IPA. Uh, it's 5.8% alcohol. And there's a black stallion road riding a motorcycle. So are these the motorcycle that this one is on? It's got like those really tall handlebar. Um, oh, like a easy rider or something. Yeah. Chopper. A chopper. chopper. A chopper. Yeah, so there's a black stallion riding a chopper, and you only see the silhouette of it, and it's um, on, a, on a road, and on the back of the road, way down the horizon, is a little V-dub bus, which is really cute. Horse box. I've never heard of this brewery. They're from 2015. Let's get it in some glasses and see what we think. Oh, they're from Nelson. Oh. Fantastic. Okay, I'll do some pouring. All right, let's get into number two and see what we think. It smells strong. Like I'll very be in charge aromatic. of smelling, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's very aromatic. That's what I said. <laughs> it's, um, it smells tr treacly. Ooh. Ooh. It smells quite, um, it's got like a, almost a hint of molasses. Have I, I mentioned, have I mentioned that my nose doesn't actually work? Like I have <laughs> actually like clinically like ten percent smell function, so I'm the worst person to be smelling things and telling oh you about it. Oh my god! So what have we got? A horse box. What's treacly mean? Treacly. Uh, it's kind of um. You know what molasses is, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's similar. Oh, okay. Quite uh, malty. Malty. Thick. Yeah, and, maybe and, yeah. cloying, but cloying. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a different one. I didn't know that one. So it, it looks a little bit like extreme dehydration urine. I'm, it, I'm sorry. I was going to say, it does look... <laughs> wow, that escalated <laughs> really quickly. No, no, I've I, I got to say, I mean, like, um, maybe I've set the tone for where my score is going, but right. oh, no. in terms of the... Too easy, very impressed with num beer number one. Yeah. Beer number two, a whole different animal. Yes, horse box. It's punchier and bigger. It is punchier. It's a good one. But it's, yeah. Mm, yeah. It's uh, more like a fall. Maybe not so much spring. Yeah. I could 
I also I have a hard time because they, they feel like polar opposites, actually. One's in a dark brown bottle. One's in this flowery white can. So one feels springy just by the design and the look, and the other feels more This autumn. feels like a heavy metal <laughs> beer. Yeah. Um, but... On you know it's not doesn't it doesn't it doesn't rock my taste buds. But interesting at all, <laughs> it's not as heavy. In <laughs> I got it. I got the <laughs> the music reference. <laughs> um, it's lighter beer, five point eight versus six point two. Interesting. I mean, it, it marginal uh, in strength terms, but I wouldn't Still have picked punchy. that. Still punchy. Yeah. yeah. You know the mm. label's pants. <laughs> um, it. Yeah, I mean, it's it. IPA is like I said, the bar is so high for IPAs. Yeah. Um, so. I, yeah, I'm going to give this a two. A little earthy to me, too. Yeah. Thrash metal sort of um, <laughs> beer, would you say? I mean, no, if we're talking about I, who, who would be a good good person to be. No, it's, it's, it's more like um, 80s soft rock that's gone <laughs> off, really. <laughs> Bummer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I mean, that's less than a two, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Unless you're really into that Maybe kind of stuff. Maybe it's just, you know, Def Leppard doing a concert when they don't really give a shit uh 2.2 2.2 struggle to go far, further than there the label i quite like the the simplicity of the label but um oh, there's something lots, lots of out of proportion stuff going on there yeah <laughs> there's something about the sli- slightly metallic blue which really jars with me yeah it's oh. like poor choice of font mixes logo is too small the horse yeah. box logo in okay. proportion. bit of a basic Lovely bottle bar. yeah yeah yeah. Mm. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sums it up. I can okay. smell right. it, but I would uh, I'd agree that the logo is too small. It's a basic bottle beer. Basic so, bottle so beer. you know, despite not tasting or smelling it or whatever, what's your score? I give it a I'll give it a uh a one and a half. <laughs> Katarina, what was yours? Three. 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 Okay. So Solid. Better than average. Yeah, uh, okay. you, you said autumn beer. Um, what sort of time of day? Breakfast, evening, night time. Oh, it's like a afternoon tea. Okay, afternoon tea. That's a time of day, isn't it? <laughs> I'm amazed. Afternoon. I'm at. <laughs> Do you want to come over for afternoon, afternoon tea, tea beers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to oh put on gosh. some Def Leppard and some <laughs> John Bon Jovi. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Right, fantastic. Yeah. So, very happy with number one. Uh, conclusion Less. number two was uh, forgettable. Apart I feel from bad every time I judge a beer if that's bad. I feel sorry for Garth, you know, because he listens to every podcast, so. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's, uh, he, he, he's up for the game, you know, and I think he's, he's, he's provided a really great contrast between two supposed similar beers we're, we're, they're both ipas but they're yeah, very you, different you, styles you feel bad but you have to put this in context and relevance right if you if you had to drink like a double brown or a steinlager or um something else in comparison Deep draft. All, all of the all of the scores would be you know three to five yeah without yeah. you know so it's kind of on a on a on a, on a curve you know yeah. So you, you know, most most of those beers are probably less than one. What what did Morgan describe? Was it a tan curve or something? I was a just I was, I was just sitting here oh, in the other podcast. So smart. That's right. <laughs> and yes, it was kind of, that's right. I'm just looking yes. at going. I can't ask. I'm going to be really dumb. I just remember seeing that button on the calculator. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then you're like, yes, I'll have one of those. <laughs> it's yeah, it's 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 physics, isn't it? It was sort of like that, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just yeah. she yeah. described it's it calculus. beautifully. So yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is physics, though. Good answer. Damn. Yes, <sighs> that is a good answer, isn't it? Yeah. I'm no sorry. one can argue with it. Oh, that's Science. physics, isn't it? Science. <laughs> God no. damn it. Good it's on sure. the internet. It's fine. Um, so two of you just been to TEDx. So another independently organised um, TED event in Christchurch last weekend. How'd it go, guys? I have a TED ache. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, man that, of that, many that, words. That, that not, so, you um, suck I'm not going to be careful. I'm gonna, yeah, I do. That's why I never come back. Um, 
I only get invited back for the the special edition. Uh, the, the sniff test. Special. The, sniff test, yeah. <laughs> the uh, I gotta be careful how I phrase this. I'm really annoyed at people who kind of broke the TED etiquette. Oh, I th- tell me if this is if this is bad etiquette, right? So there's four. How many breaks are there? There's three breaks during TED, yeah, right? Yeah, something so like that. So you find your seat and you're sitting with your friends. So we've managed to find each other. So we're all sitting in a row together. And then you go out for morning tea break. We come back and some people decided that morning tea break is the perfect opportunity to change your seats. And they're just kicking our stuff down the row and saying, oh, something or other. They were of a certain age, shall we say an older age. And this happened every break. And we, it got so, so frustrating. They just, we had to take our stuff with us in the end because who knows where they were going to move it to. Uh-huh. Uh, I thought you meant to... If you leave your stuff there, you come back to your same seat sort of thing. They're numbered. Their rows have got letters. It's not hard. I don't know. Is it just me, or is that bad etiquette? Is it, uh, are these the baby boomers? No, nah, they were quite old. Quite old, like yeah, older than yeah. And, I know, and my, my baby feedback, boomers are the last living generation. You right? reckon it was their first time though, right? Yeah, but that's just this is this is good form, isn't it? Like you know, it's not a Ted specific thing that you don't go around in the breaks changing seats <laughs> to get better seats for you and your mates, like and kick Here's other people's stuff prop. away. See, it's an unspoken rule. I mm-hmm. agree. That is bad Ted etiquette. You have your goody, goody bags and you got your, there's all sorts of you stuff. Got a lot of you stuff, got a lot of stuff. Yeah. You, don't, you want to feel secure in the knowledge that when you come back from eating the little pies at morning tea, so many pies. that your stuff's <laughs> going to be there and you're going to sit in the same place. I reckon there should be an old person tax, is what I was thinking. So <laughs> they should, because my, my comment was they should price them out. Why don't we just price annoying people out? When they sat there and they said, what's the significance of the red circle? And it's like, well, if you come to TED and your biggest question is, why is there a red circle on the stage? Like, I sit where I sit and I'm around a lot of people who do this all the time. Mmm. Yeah. Oh. And all these freaking filler sounds that I am right. so distracted mm. by them. Behi- <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played, sir. I can't deal with it. Yeah. It oh, distracts really? me so uh, much from mm. some of the amazing speakers that were there. So that okay. goes back to the fact that there were some amazing speakers mm. uh, from all over the world, um, including our hometown hero, Raf Manji, mm. he got a lot of applause and mm. um, spoke on being a citizen and things like that. And that was it, really he, interesting. Just yeah. to quickly point out, he's a, a city councillor, isn't he? Correct. So, and uh, he's a uh, second term as well, isn't he now? Correct. So, yeah. Um, and d- a lot of the speakers were just really high caliber. Kyla always, and the team always put on an amazing event. Um, but there are these subtle things that people who've been to other TED Talks, TEDx Christchurch Talks in particular before notice. And then we start to get irritated. And I think it's, uh, I don't, I don't know what to do with that really. Now I just go out to people and uh, the other part is that, oh, um, my job requires me to be extremely social all the time. And so I finally I found Rob. I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> <was my> <laughs> <job>. <laughs> uh, I found Rob during the break and I was like, I don't want to talk to anybody. Will you just sit here and watch me eat pies? <laughs> and so people came around and like handed us all these foods and I was just eating. And I was like, if I stuff my face, people will not ask me questions or talk to me because yeah. I'm just overloaded on the social stuff. It, the week before was Festa and it's just constantly people coming up to you and bless them. But sometimes Katerina wants her personal space, hence why I live in Brighton. <laughs> if, there's, if there's one thing I can guarantee is that if you come and sit or stand next to me, these snacks will just come to you by association. <laughs> you look hungry. They were coming out of the catering tent straight towards us across an obstacle course of gravel and they're just bringing you pies. It was amazing. It was excellent. Yeah. That's my effect, the effect I have on catering. We're, we're mm. definitely at peak event right now, right? There's just event after event after event going on. It, it, There's it, also a limited number of people who are running these events. And mm. so I feel like we're all spread too thin. The competing event in the city was Diwali. And um, Isaac was shooting that uh, event. And he came home and he was just like, Whoa! They know how to throw a party, and I was like, "Actually, huge." Yeah, Uh, Yeah, Diwali is amazing. What are you going to be doing for summer? Looking forwards, just conscious. I'm not going to be here in person, but I'm going to be at the end of a Skype phone line. Mm, So it's going to be like most days, and it'll just be I'll just do what I do every day. So you just picture me like you see me here, and I'll still be here. 
at Christmas. I mean, because uh, this time last year you were um, renovating the space oh, that we're in right. at Quad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah pretty much for the, the whole <laughs> so of, of your holidays. So I don't want to do painting this Christmas. I'm pretty keen <laughs> on not painting ever again. Um, yeah. That's right. Maybe I should go away this Christmas. Ooh. Yeah, good idea, wouldn't it? With or without your better well, Clearly, half. clearly with my better half. Okay, okay just checking. What kind of a question is that? What sort of question is that? Are you, you going to go and sample Indian takeaways around the country? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so That's romantic. So romantic. We'll go on a road trip. I like the idea of taking a break when other people are not taking a break. So like you said, everyone's going on break during holiday. This or like winter holiday what's deemed and you know, there's no school and everything and so p- places that are really awesome to visit are just so full of people now Terrible it's ridiculous children, small yeah. <laughs> oh my god, oh god. 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 So <laughs> give them a kick we, we've, we've never we, we never did that and so so well, last year we, we did three yeah. weeks on on the west coast um and when we normally go it's, it's usually out of season and you know we hardly see another person which is great oh my god there was just too many people. Yeah, it's um, it, it's that kind of cultural problem, though, isn't it? That everyone goes on holiday at the same time, and everyone pretty much from Christchurch maybe goes up to Nelson Marlborough district or exactly. over to the coast or whatever. Even out to the Banks Peninsula, like yeah. O'Kane's Bay, gets ridiculous that week Is between that right? Christmas oh, and really? New Year. Just oh, well. avoid it at all costs. Good so, to know. I mean, lucky me, I already live at the beach, and so it's empty. Yeah. And I love it. Sweet. So I'm right in the middle of organizing women who get shit done in Christchurch. So for those who don't know, it's an unconference to bring um, women. What? Isn't this another event, though? Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> I told you, peak event. I'm an, in the middle of un- it. It's an unevent. It's so an it's unconference. a little bit different. It's right. an unconference. You'd un- think it'd be ca- like my life. <laughs> oh, God. It's not always about you, Rob. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> You'd think because it's an unevent, it'd be easier to organize. However, it still costs a lot of money to pull together. So I'm right in the middle of gathering sponsorship for that. So the event is end of February, um, and it's an unconference bringing women leaders and doers and supporters and not just women, but people who identify as women, which is very important. Um, And there's a difference that um, we're all going to come together in Christchurch. We'll open for applications within the next two weeks. So by the time this is uh, podcast is up, you'll have the link to the registrations. And um, we're looking for as diverse of a population of women as possible. WWGSD.NZ. Women who get shit done.NZ. And um, I'll send you if there's a Christchurch specific link as well and some of that uh, information. But we're. Lucky me, I have an amazing core group of um, organizers with me, but we'll be very busy over the holiday to round up some sponsors who won't be answering emails, <laughs> but we'll be looking for some of those um, over the break, which will be great. And that gives me a bit of a break from Ministry of Awesome stuff too. You've had a busy year. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of like Jaya, my years are flipped flopped, so I or my seasons are flip flopped, so I go... Well, I'm just getting into the middle of stuff. Like, let's do this. You know, and everyone's like, we're going to take a break and we're going to reflect on the year. And I'm like, I'm sorry, what? This is summer. <laughs> yeah, let's get no. this shit done. Yes. Yes. It's a bit weird. Well, what are you going to be doing for summer this year, John? I am going to be tending my flock. I'm getting three chickens. Oh, right. Yay! Uh, uh, and they've already been um, ordained by our nieces. Um, What's that mean? been named they've been named named. yeah we were like we showed them the pictures of the chickens we're getting and they were like oh yeah cool cool yeah you have to call them colin steve and pete i was like (laughs) what if they lay i was like uh they're 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 like girl chickens no no colin steve and pete i was like (laughs) it's done now it's done. It's gender so, fluid naming. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, no, fantastic. That's that's exactly it. So I will, I'll be looking after some chickens. Um, you want to know my chickens' names? Yeah, please. Slave one, two, and three. <laughs> because I don't have a reference. <laughs> so we're taking two weeks off, and we're just going to stay at home, and and go swimming a lot um, at Cass Bay, and we found a secret beach. Uh-huh. In, the, in the area and we're not going to tell you where it is <laughs> it's amazing I can't wait to, to go there all the time for the next two months on the streets of Christchurch there is going to be a secret spark bike it's one of the bike share bikes it's not going to be that secret it's going to be pink 
There's only one of them in the whole city. And if you find this pink bike and you uh, take a photo and you upload it to social media with hashtag pink spark bike, you go in the draw to win a Huawei P9 smartphone. That's it's a spark. phone pink? No. Okay. Also, if you ride it, you have to return it though. You can't just ride it home and hide it. <laughs> <laughs> ride and return. There's weekly prizes of yet things that I've not decided. Um, you may win a listen to this podcast. Um, <laughs> so for the next two months, that is that is what's exciting in my life. Did you like that plug that Excellent. I stuck in there? There is a thing, an object or an item or item of software or an analog item that you can't live without at the moment. Katerina, what would it be? You can't say your phone because you've said that before. Oh, well, I just bought a new laptop. <sighs> so a big ticket item. It's more like I, I can't live without it because I paid so bloody much for it that I would be scared. I like have an eye on it all the time. Um, so it's probably my new Air. Isn't that what it's called? An Air. It's the thin one. MacBook Air? Yeah. You got a new laptop? Yeah. Cool. I had to. So if anybody has cool stickers... Mm. I got a fresh laptop to slap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, how about you, Rob? Is there what, what is the thing apart from Indian food that you can't live without at the moment? Maybe previously I would have said beer, which would probably be that's quite a bad sign. It's probably a sign you need to make a bet. Erin, <laughs> um, you're going to be rich soon. <laughs> no, I'm going all the way. I'm winning. Um, <laughs> bet. Hmm. We we should do a sweepstake on who. Who caves first? Oh, God. <laughs> Twice podcast. It's up to you guys. Time. It's up to you guys. It's fine. Yeah, you can do what you want. Yeah. I'm going to win. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the sound of I someone. Know. So I need well, that as like my money. ringtone. I need, I need, I need the money. Win. So, win. Is, is the thing you can't live without uh, tonight the uh, um, the screwdriver and screws to, cl to close your gate so it can't open? Yeah, for the trick or yeah. Treaters. Let's talk about that because <laughs> this is the. F oh, I can't have been there last year. We've moved, moved, and we've got a different gate. So the last one used to have a really good, like, solid latch thing, and you could shut everyone out. This one's got a. Yeah, maybe if I, I might screw something over the handhole so you can't get in to open the gate. <laughs> but as soon as you hear that, oh, that gate go, oh, so annoying. I just yell at them, go away, go away. But they ring the doorbell and throw a stink bomb on the doorstep or something. I just hate it. Pyro. I have an interesting story, though, uh, that I've forgotten. So not very interesting, is it? No troubles. We should start sending Aaron, like, bottles of champagne and stuff, eh? <laughs> Did, did I tell you what old, what old mate, we'll call him um, Ants, did the other day at an event? So the photographer comes round. To, oh, can I take a photo of the two of you together? Oh, God, not a photo. Um, and Ants goes, oh, could you just hold my drink for a sec, Rob? And he tried, and, and I, was, I almost did it. I, I almost grabbed it. Oh, hang on a minute. Yeah. He was trying to get this. He's very, very clever. Very crafty. Uh, Ants is not his real name, of course. That's just you know name we made Who up. Who would yeah. be named that anyway? Yeah, yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. Um, is there anything left in your house that you can't live without, Jai? Or uh, I, I'm not actually officially going to ask you unless you have got something because um, I, I haven't got anything. Not my workshop. My workshop. Oh. Really, yeah, I've been down there a lot creating, yeah. So, uh, Katerina, where do you live online? I thought you almost asked me for my address and I was about <laughs> to give it to everyone. <laughs> you won't get into my house. You won't get through the gate. <laughs> yeah. But the trick-or-treaters, uh, I live online on Twitter mostly, at yeah. me, Katarina. Yeah. Superb. Rob? We, I, I asked you like this time last year, right? And mm. basically, probably the day after, you made your Instagram profile private. <laughs> 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 so, so it's probably not Instagram. <laughs> well, it probably. So I, I, I love think, that Instagram, by the way. Yeah. So, um, and I'm, I'm terrible at updating it. I should, because so much is going on. Um, so, what's Rob's job? Uh, I, I try and be a little bit cryptic with it, and you try and guess my job. It's a game for the whole family. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been thinking about getting on Twitter, but I can hardly keep the Instagram updated with just a photo, which is pretty simple, let alone write something. So, yeah, what's Rob's job? Cool. You can find uh, Jai Gibson anywhere that uh, air can be breathed uh, by basically putting his name in any of the popular or less popular search engines and he will be on all of the first four pages. Yep. Pretty, pretty much true. Yeah, I, can be, uh, I guess so. Yeah. yeah, can't disagree with that. Famous man. And uh, you can find Twice Podcast, Twitter, Twice Podcast, Instagram, Twice Podcast, me very occasionally on Twitter, David underscore Binstead. Uh, email, 
We've never received, well, not in the last six months, any That's emails. That's because we never told anyone our email address. <laughs> we have an email. <laughs> Twicepodcast at gmail.com. Um, from December, Twice Podcast will be broadcasting from both Wellington and Christchurch. Game changer. Global. Just leaves me, David Binstead, last night in Christchurch for the foreseeable Ooh. future um, to thank our first guest, Katerina Gutierrez. Thanks for having me. No, it's great to have you back. Our second guest, Rob Henderson. Thank you, David, for everything you do as well. Oh, no, not at all. I really appreciate everybody around the table's huge support over the last year plus of podcasting and trying to get some shit done uh, personally in co-work spaces, um, supported by Mr. Henderson, Ms. Gutierrez, Mr. Gibson. And also, lastly, but not least, to thank my regular, valued, fantastic, funny, original, long-suffering co-host, Jai Gibson. Thanks, buddy. No, awesome days. Looking forward to the future, whatever it's going to bring. So, how are we all today? Uh, this is a pre-record because this isn't okay. going to release until the 21st. 21st of October. Or, oh my God. <laughs> 21st oh my God. <laughs> 21st of November. Wow. Yeah, because we, we just put one out. <laughs> we did, didn't we? And so we're like in the future already. Yeah. Is so what you're saying? Are yeah. we in, uh, is this an hour or half an hour in the future? 21 days in the future, Rob. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, yes. When it, when in the future when we arrive, will it be an hour or half an hour? This is a full hour, right? This is the full this one. This is the full business. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. the, the okay. full month. <laughs> yeah. Um, so by the 21st... I didn't know what I got myself into. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't understand what he was talking about. No, I don't know. what. I, it's really, it's the end of Monday. Yeah. How's your day gone, Rob? That's good. Yeah. I'm tired. And... I don't really have a weekend, that's probably why. And uh, so it feels like Friday repeating. Ah, uh, last Friday. Mm. Right. Just Friday, 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 <laughs> until you have another weekend. But you never get a weekend. Yeah, it's Friday. <laughs> Fair dues. Fair dues. How about you, Katarina? I think How are it's you really feeling? fun to think about what, it, what I'm going to feel like on the 21st. Probably uh. exhausted. <laughs> yeah, you would have had um, singularity. Yeah, so my mind will be in shreds. I think that's what happens at these things, right? Yeah, like I can't. I came home from Ted, and I'm bloody exhausted. Yeah, I, I thought to myself, I could not do three days of that. That's what I'm afraid of. Like, we'll see. Farewell, farewell. And um, talk to me about Ted. You. Ted. Yes, yes, no. Ted. Yes, yes, no, no. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. It was, um, that's one of the better ones I feel like in New Zealand. I've been to uh, TEDx Wellington, TEDx Wellington Women, and a Queenstown. So yeah. maybe I'm a little biased, but I really love that one. Isaac Theatre is such an epic venue. So when you have um, the Christchurch Youth Council opened with some opera singers and things like that. Orchestra, youth orchestra. I'm sorry, sorry. I keep doing that. Um, the Christchurch Youth Orchestra opened and they were amazing. Uh, oh my they gosh. Were good. They really set the stage to feel like an epic event. Mm. Orchestra. Mm. Maybe because I work with the council all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you should have made the youth council sing though, just as an opener. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to put people off. Mm, just okay. to set the scene for the rest of the day so that every talk <laughs> seems amazing because anything is better than the youth council being forced to sing <laughs> on stage. Uh, you don't know. They could be amazing also. I don't even know the youth council. I don't even know how many people there are. Yeah. You ever heard the... Uh, I'm just curious to know orchestra. if Rob has used his low expectations technique. Is that how you proposed to, to Charlotte? Did you say, look, look it's going to be shit. But um, well, no, you, don't, uh, you, you should don't, marry me. <laughs> you don't announce it in advance. Uh, no, I no. There was yeah. The more well, it wasn't low expectations, but there was no expectations. I didn't yeah. you know put any conditions on it or any you know expectations on it. Full stop. Was I like, oh, yeah, here? Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Superb. Um, you, if, if you just recently had a wedding anniversary, or no. was that just me making it up? You made it up. Okay, no, fair we did. Yes, no, we had a two-year wedding anniversary. Oh yeah. Congratulations. Two. Thank you. Yeah, how, how did it go? Uh, without too much detail. Uh, it, I <laughs> took Indian home for dinner. Takeaway. Picked uh, it up uh, on the way home. Yeah. Romantic. Is that a, uh, a bit of a bit of a 
soft spot of hers, Indian food. No, and I don't think it's very good anniversary <laughs> food either. It was just what we felt like on the day. Again, low expectations. Hmm. <laughs> what, what do you want? Like five o'clock, what do you want for dinner? Uh, Indian, okay. Delivered. Which, which, which by Indian? The time you which get to two, By the time you get to two anniversaries, like when you've been here two years, anniversary is just pretty meaningless. I find. Says the man <laughs> in says, the relationship. Says the bloke. <laughs> I, I, yes, no, uh, I, I have to, I have to take it quite seriously, I think. Yeah. I would, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, our one was, our uh, one was a uh, cotton anniversary, so cotton. I, offered, I offered some lint from my belly button. <laughs> And that wasn't, like that's that didn't go stupid. down well. I, th- I think I would get my <laughs> so, balls handed to me on a plate if I <laughs> even pretended to do such a thing. If you get Indian for dinner, it's pretty good. Uh. More, two fingers. Um, you edit this, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> this does get so many good sound bites already. Oh, that's fantastic. We're going to be sport, sport for titles uh, today, I can no. tell you.